So in this video today, we're going to be talking about which M4 Mac you should get for gaming. And the answer is none of them. This is a trick question. And the reality is that you probably don't want a Mac for gaming. Virtually everyone watching this video is going to be better off buying a dedicated gaming console or getting some kind of gaming PC or laptop. Great. So now that is out of the way, this video is really for people who need to make use of Mac OS for some productivity or work reason, or want to take advantage of the Mac's high build quality and low power usage of the new ARM chip and want to play the occasional game, not necessarily every single game, then it might be worth considering which M4 Mac that you want to choose to play some of your favorite titles. And today we're going to be testing out five different configurations of the M4 chip. So that's everything from the lowest end M4 chip with only eight GPU cores and eight CPU cores contained within the iMac, all the way up to the very highest end M4 Max chip in the MacBook Pro 16 inch with a whopping 14 CPU cores, 40 GPU cores, and 48 gigabytes of RAM. So the first benchmark we're looking at is Total War Warhammer 3 running the battle benchmark at 1080p high. And we can see that the performance is broadly in line with the number of GPU cores in the machine. For example, on the top end, we are testing out the M4 Max with 40 GPU cores and the game runs at an average of 103.1 FPS, nearly double the performance of the higher end M4 Pro with 20 GPU cores, which can get 56.6 FPS. And if we jump down to the M4 base model, which has half of the number of GPU cores or quarter of the GPU cores of the M4 for max, then we're only getting a 28.7 FPS average in this instance. Other games tested don't scale quite so linearly, but are close. Here in the Shadow of the Tomb Raider benchmark, we're running this at 1080p at the high preset. And if you look at the lowest end M4 chip with only eight GPU cores, we're getting an average frame rate of only 43 FPS. But if we double that GPU core count and we take a look at the M4 Pro with 16 GPU cores, we're getting 90 frames per second, which is basically double the amount of frames. However, when we get to the M4 M4 Max chip with 40 GPU cores, we're only getting an average FPS of 164 FPS. Here the benchmark is saying we're only 53% GPU bounds. We probably need to run this benchmark at a higher resolution in order to feed more frames to this GPU in order to tax this system. Next up, we are running the Cyberpunk 2077 benchmark. So the native Mac optimized version of Cyberpunk 2077 has been announced and it's going to come out early next year. However, for now, we can actually run the Windows DirectX 12 version of the game running through a translation layer called Crossover Preview. And this benchmark here here through multiple translation lists still provides a very playable frame rate and even the lowly iMac can run this at 27.4 FPS averaging at 1080p high. And it's going to be really exciting to see how well Cyberpunk is going to run once it's been optimized for the Apple Silicon Mac. Now here's a couple of things to think about when you're selecting an M4 Mac for gaming. And the first thing is about RAM. The thing about memory and gaming is either you have enough and you're golden, or if you don't, then your Mac starts to increase memory pressure and go into swap memory, forcing memory to be written onto the slower internal solid state drive, tanking performance of games. Luckily, this only really happens if you don't have enough RAM and with 16 gigabytes minimum with the, all of the new M4 chips, this won't be a problem for most games. However, there are exceptions to this. For example, if you're running the game Star Wars Jedi Survivor, this has a memory leak issue which it persists even through crossover preview. In this example from the YouTube channel Mac Pro Tips, which I'll leave a link to in the description, RAM use gradually increases over time, filling way over 16 gigabytes until performance drops and then the game eventually crashes. Now more RAM would technically help with the situation, but to be fair, even if you had 120 gigabytes, then this would still inevitably crash. Personally, I think that for the majority of like Mac gaming, 16 gigabytes is probably enough. Just be aware that when you specify the amount of RAM in a Mac, this is actually soldered in so it can't be upgraded later, so make sure to choose as much as you require at the beginning. 16 gigs is probably enough for most people, but it doesn't hurt to have more. Similarly, you might also want to think about storage and games, which are getting pretty huge with games like Baldur's Gate 3 taking over 140 gigabytes of space. And be aware that the Mac internal storage like RAM is soldered in and non-upgradable. And the exception to this is the newly redesigned M4 Mac Mini, which has removable SSD storage. However, there's no real commercially available upgrade path for storage, so make sure to spec it out at the beginning accordingly. Personally, I think it's fine to buy the smallest internal SSD and then to supplement by adding external storage drives like a self-built 4TB NVMe attached via USB-C or Thunderbolt in order to store large files and games. And if you have an SD card slot like on the MacBook Pros, you can use something like a Jet Drive or a Base-T in order to add up to 2TB of SD card storage flush against the side of your MacBook. And with the recent updates to macOS Acquire, you can now easily add these drives so any large games or apps are downloaded to the external drive instead of the internal solid-state drive. So you can put your Steam 
theme library there, and you can even move your entire home folder on the external drive too. Finally, if you're looking for a deal, you might save quite a lot of money by buying an older generation M3 or even M2 MacBook Air, which are still available new from the Apple website. Luckily, Apple updated these models to 16 gigabytes without increasing the price. Just be aware that unlike all of the other M4 models that we've tested, these are all passively cooled laptops with no fans, and they will thermally throttle somewhat when gaming over long periods of time. However, they do offer an interesting price to performance ratio compared to the newer M4s, and are definitely worth thinking about at least until the new M4 MacBook Air refresh happens sometime next year. Also have a think about using uh, previous generation M1 or M2, especially the Pro and the Max models. So for example, here we've got benchmarks from multiple users, which are gonna show on screen now. So just as an example, something like the M3 Pro with 18 GPU cores places roughly in between the M4 and M4 Pro chip. Similarly, something like the M1 Pro chip from 2021 is nearly beaten by the base M4 chip in the iMac with only eight GPU cores. So this is really something to think about. You might wanna consider buying an earlier chip instead. Just be aware that if you're using an M1 M1 or M2 chip, you won't get access to ray tracing features, which personally I don't think is a big deal, but some people might be worried about that. Now personally, my favorite from this generation of M4 chips is the M4 Mac mini base model. So this comes in at 599, and it's basically the cheapest way to get into the Apple Silicon ecosystem right now. Of course, buying this also requires a desktop monitor and a keyboard and a mouse as well, so that adds to the cost. But at its base configuration, it is an excellent computer and it can play games very well too. And if you're looking for a laptop, personally, I wouldn't really consider the base M4, not because it isn't a decent processor, but just for the fact that the M4 MacBook Air is probably just around the corner and it's gonna have a very, very similar configuration, probably gonna start off at eight CPU cores and eight GPU cores, which is very similar to the base level iMac, and it's gonna be a lot cheaper than the MacBook Pros. If I were to choose a MacBook Pro myself, then I'll probably consider the lower end M4 Pro chip. So this comes in at 2499, and it comes with a 14 core CPU and 20 core GPU. So you could upgrade to the higher end M4 Pro with 20 GPU cores, double the amount of memory and double the amount of storage. However, personally, I feel like the majority of like normal users wouldn't necessarily take advantage of that power, especially in gaming. So now anyway, I hope you found these thoughts and the benchmarks in this video useful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.